Just 12 days after the horrific Pulwama terror attacks, India has struck back and how. The Indian Air Force has carried out airstrikes on jesh e Mohammed terror camps in Pakistan at 3.30 a.m. today. Sources have told India today that 10 or at least 10 Mirage 2000 fighters from Gwalior crossed the line of control and destroyed terror camps in Balakot for certain, but also, according to some sources, Chakoti and Muzaffarabad in Pakistan. Well, during the airstrikes, Alpha 3 control rooms of the Maulana Masood Azhar Jesh e Mohammed were also destroyed. The Air Force jets dropped 1,000 pound bombs on those terror pads. Sources also, also tell India Today that an Indian Air Force Heron drone was part of the operation to aid the airstrike and give pilots real-time intelligence and imagery of the site they were targeting. In this operation, a very large number of jaish e Mohammed terrorists, trainers, senior commanders and groups of jihadis who were being trained for fida in action were eliminated. This facility at Balakot was headed by Maulana Yusuf Azhar, alias Ustad Ghori, the brother-in-law of Masood Azhar, chief of the JEM. The government of India is firmly and resolutely committed to taking all necessary measures to fight the menace of terrorism. Hence, this non-military preemptive action was specifically targeted at the jaish e Mohammed camp. The selection of the target was also conditioned by our desire to avoid civilian casualties. The facility is located in thick forest on a hilltop far away from any civilian presence. Sogand Mujes Mitti ki. Sogand Mujes Mitti ki. Main des nahi mitne dunga. Main des nahi rukne dunga. Main des nahi jukne dunga. Okay, very important point you make there, General Kapoor, when you say that, uh, you know, today's operation needs to be lauded, it needs to be applauded, but there has to be a long-term approach, so there is a permanent stop to the proxy war that Pakistan has continued to perpetrate and will no doubt be looking to perpetrate even more on the back of what has just happened in Balakot. I want to bring in Air Marshal P.K. Barbara, former Vice Chief of the Indian Air Force as well. Uh, Air Marshal Barbara, you know, purely from a fighter pilot's perspective, purely from a fighter pilot's perspective, there is going to be a great deal of interest, sir, today about how an operation like this was carried out. because. Millions of Indians will be thinking, you know, we've always bought these fighter jets and we've never really used them in this manner. Certainly the new generations will be very surprised that this operation that happened today is actually a reality. Take us through, Air Marshal Barbara, how difficult an operation like this would have been. Firstly, good evening to my seniors. I would like to state that the government of India, the people of India, are paying us a salary. What for? They are paying us a salary to do our job. And our job is to fight a war when called upon by the nation. Mm. To take on any kind of a target system which needs to be eradicated from the ground. Yeah. At the border in Punjab on the Grand Trunk Road, the famous face-off went ahead this evening as it always does. The peacock posturing, the excessive goose step drama. Now more in step with what's actually going on. Crowds on both sides cheered. Pakistan and India. Brothers, rivals, capable of mutual annihilation. But somehow that just seems unlikely. For the first time in history, two nuclear armed states have ordered conventional airstrikes in the other's territory. And today, both Pakistan and India claimed they'd shot down each other's planes. Make no mistake, this situation is dangerous and the possibility of escalation real. 
This jet fighter was shot down in what the Indian Air Force said was a dogfight between four warplanes from each side. I want to ask a question to the Indian government. Can we afford miscalculation, considering the nature of the weapons we both have? Should we not think at this moment that if this situation escalates, then where will it go? It will not be in my control or in Narendra Modi's control. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a Hindu nationalist with elections now just weeks away, hasn't responded to Imran Khan today or spoken publicly about what's happening. Yesterday, he swore an oath on Indian soil that he wouldn't let his country be erased. This morning, Pakistan closed its commercial airspace, perhaps to avert the possibility of accidents with errant nukes. Planes in and out of Delhi gave the frontier a wide berth. In Srinagar, in Indian Kashmir, they weren't taking any chances at Sri Maharaja Hari Singh Hospital. There's been little short of panic in the valley, over which the two countries have already fought two wars since partition left its status unresolved in 1947. Well, we have never refused talks. Uh, we have always been in favor of talks. And we have tried it again and again and again. And every time we have initiated talks, every time we have taken, made the effort to find a modus vivendi with Pakistan, there has been a terror attack. So that is uh, the track record of this uh, neighbor of ours. Uh, this time also, there was this uh, attack on the Indian Armed Forces, the biggest ever attack on the Indian Armed Forces in Jammu and Kashmir. And a terror group, notorious terror group based in Pakistan, claims that they responsibility. But our friend, friend Pakistan has always been in denial and continues to be in denial. So that is the situation. Am I the reason you get stoned every week now? Built up integrity, got you texting, emailing me, wanting me to feel with you. Baby, just face reality, move on. Sometimes it's hard to face reality.